G'day folks, back at it again here today. Uh, another machine from the farm here. This is a 2001 Yamaha Kodiak uh, 400. Uh, I think it's YFM 400 FGWXYZ or something. Uh, anyway, uh, it needs a little TLC. Like I said, it's a 2001, so it's a 19, almost 20 year old machine now. Um, I'm going to put its first set of brakes on. Uh, the back started grinding a little bit there, so we're getting some steel on steel action. The front still work, but since we're at it, we're going to do both. Uh, this one's been in the family since new, so we know the maintenance history of it. It runs great. Uh, just recently, it started having a few other problems, charging system, and the carburetor needs a good clean. So uh, we're going to get into those later, but for now, I got my helper here with me. We want to, to learn how to put brakes on a four-wheeler, so... Uh, she is going to do the work while I stand here and supervise. Okay, first thing here, obviously, is going to be to take off the wheel. Now, this this particular machine's got the solid axles. The newer ones are all independents and whatnot, but one brake for the whole back axle. In this case, it's behind the left wheel. Different makes and models are going to have it different places. <coughs> You can see it doesn't get cleaned much. <coughs> All they want to do is drive it. Nobody ever wants to clean the darn thing. <coughs> there you go. Now roll it out of there, out of the way. Yeah. Okay, so the two uh, pins that hold the pads in are right there. This one here was a little bit seized up. Those pins go all the way through the housing back into here. But the threaded part is out here on the face. So what I did was I just hit with the propane, a little bit of heat around in this area. Don't heat the, the actual bolt. You want to heat the metal around the bolt. A little penetrating oil. And it's tight, but it's spinning. So you, could, you could go at it like a gorilla and strip it out, and then you're screwed. Or you can be patient and do things the right way. Okay, so as it turns out, we've got a seized pin here. Which explains why the brake wore so badly. All right. Normally the caliper will slide back and forth in here. Uh, you can see I got the boot out of this side. It wasn't seized, but that side is. And what will happen is when they seize, the caliper can no longer move. So it puts all the pressure on one pad. All right. Not a big deal. We'll unseize that. Put some fresh grease in there. Okay. Pins are out. As you can see, threads are on the outside here. Uh, the pin goes all the way through and it gets exposed to all the dirt and rust, so they're pretty tight to get out of there. Uh, they do take a little bit of work, but just keep spinning it and just pull out gently with your fingers or a tool. Don't damage the threads, don't grab onto it with vice grips or anything like that. It'll come out. Okay, so there's your pad. You can see here where your pins hold it in place. All right, once those pins are out, it basically drops out of place. Uh, and there's the back one, which was a real bad one. You can see how long it's been going, because that one seized up. All right, so here's our pin. It's got the rubber part on it there. It's supposed to be <laughs> greasy, and that is dry as a bone. It's got old dried grease on it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use some penetrating oil. Drop it. Penetrating oil in the hole. It'll help loosen up the dried up grease that's in there. We're going to clean up both of our pins. On the wire wheel, put in some fresh grease and put this back together. All right, took the pins over to the wire wheel, clean them up. You can see 20 seconds and they look like they're brand new just about. Okay, so before we can put this back in with the new brakes, we got to push the piston back to make room because this will, as your brakes wear, this stays out farther and farther every time so that your brakes, when you touch them, they're there instead of having to touch them and wait for that piston to move an inch. Okay? Okay, so our piston's in place. We got our rubber boot back in, our dust cap. Same for the bracket. We cleaned up that pin and a little bit of grease on it. And it's got a rubber boot as well. We're going to put that back in. I took it out because when I heated up the caliper to get that one pin out, I didn't want to risk melting this. Not so bad. I see. There, that just goes back in like that. If it's got any tears in it, you probably should consider replacing it because you see the amount of dirt that gets in there. It's just going to fill up that cavity and your caliper is just going to seize up again in no time. Okay, 
with the uh, caliper off, the bracket off, and everything else, push your brake pads in. Um, there's a spring up in here that you kind of got to push against to get the pins into place. Once they're in like that, you can tighten them down. But we're going to leave it for now. Okay, the bracket goes back on. Okay, we slid the bracket back in, some fresh grease on both pins. This one here has a flat spot on the uh, pin that you have to line up with. There's a flat spot here on the bracket. Otherwise, it won't go in flush. So you just got to turn the pin until you get it lined up. What do you mean by flush? Flat. So once that's in, you can put your lock back on here. And you don't got to do it tight. You can just put it on so it's there and you're ready to go. Leave a gap, obviously. Well, we should have plenty of gap because we pushed the piston in all the way. Uh, these will kind of be going crooked if you're not careful. So just give yourself a little bit of a gap and slide her back down over the caliper. Sorry, over the uh, slider back down over the disc. And put your little bolts back in. Okay, so everything's back in place, loose. Now we just have to tighten up all the bolts. I do the bracket first because it's going to be wobbly and you'll be fighting with things if you don't have a tight bracket. All right, I don't worry about torque when it comes to things like that. Pins, they're in good shape. Uh... They were full of dirt. We just cleaned them up. And we'll screw them back in. Again, you don't need to be putting Loctite and things like that on these. Uh, I just put a little bit of grease on the inside so that the pads will, won't get all binding on there. Like they were pretty rusty so the pad didn't, didn't have the ability to move the way it probably should have. And lastly... All right, all tightened up, ready to go. You can see this pin here looks like it's right at the very edge. But once the we pump the brakes a few times and the piston closes back up, that's going to come forward and it'll all work out in the end. Yeah, you can see there the piston's beginning to move and the brakes are now touching. Okay, you can see she's rotating quite nicely here, no problem. My helper's going to hold the brake down for me right now. And that's working perfect. And that is how you do the back brakes.